All right. So <coughs> here's a problem. We want to determine the uh, internal shear force and bending moment again at point C. So uh, my strategy, like we did last time, would be to uh, kind of draw a line there at C. And again, let's investigate uh, left side or right side, whichever one's going to be to our advantage. We'll look at the left side first. Um, I got a reaction at A, which is a pin. So how many unknowns at a pin? Two. And then the loading is a triangle. Okay. Bank that in your memory. And then look at the right-hand side. Well, I have a little less to do in terms of my reactions because it's a roller. There's only one unknown at a roller. But look at the resulting uh, load distribution on the right-hand side. What is it? It's trapezoidal. Trapezoids are a little more uh, work than rectangles, I mean triangles, so I think it'll be easier for us this time to uh, go left. So if I'm going left, then really what I'm interested in are my reactions at A. So I'll go ahead and make assumptions for those. I'll assume AY is up and that I have a reaction in the X direction, direction AX to the right. And just to, don't want to leave B out, so I'll go ahead and assume B-Y is up, even though I'm not really concerned about that right now. So I'm going to draw a free body. I'm going to look at this as my free body diagram for the whole structure and find my reactions at A. So I'll probably sum moments about B. Uh, next thing I do is how am I going to handle this uh, triangular load? Well, fortunately, I know the area of a triangle. Right? It's one-half base times height, so one-half base. Uh, my base is uh, 18, and my height is 3, so that would be um, nine, that's 27. So I'll have a concentrated equivalent load of 27 kips. And then where is it located? Well, let me turn the light down a little bit. Hang on a second. This light is glaring pretty badly. There we go. That's a little better. Can you see that now, that orange? Um, let me try this. Oh, that's worse, isn't it? Okay. Um, so we need to know the centroid of a rectangle. The way I always remember it is it's one-third the distance from the big end or two-thirds from the small end, whichever you like. So one-third from the big end, so one-third of this total distance is 18, so one-third the distance would be from the big end would be 6. And since we're summing moments about B to find the reactions at A, that's the, the distance I want. So now I'm ready to go, so I'm going to sum moments using right-hand rule for my sign convention, and I'm going to sum moments about B, make sure the whole thing is in equilibrium to find my reactions at A. So as I sum moments about B, my concentrated equivalent force, 27, creates what kind of moment about B, positive or negative? Right-hand rule. Looks like positive. So I have a force of 27 kips and a distance or a moment arm of 6. I get all the way over to AY. That's going to create negative moment. The force is AY, I don't know it, and the moment arm is 18. So I should be able to solve for AY, and I think it is 18. Is that right? No. Nine. nine. I was thinking of BY. Thank you, nine. And then last but not least, I can sum forces in the x direction. I'll assume to the right is positive, and all I have is AX, so I know it's zero. So now I'm going to draw a free body diagram of this section AC. So free body diagram of AC. I may make it a little bit bigger so we'll have a little more room than original. So there's the beam. 
with a triangular load on the end. I've got my reaction at A, which is up and equal to 9 kips. Uh, there is no AX reaction. I know that distance is 6 feet. Uh, what's, the ins what's the magnitude of this load right here? If you go back and look at the original problem, uh, if you look at the length of the beam, it's 18 feet and 3 high. So what would be the height here at 6 feet? Yeah, so similar triangle says the height of this triangle or the intensity here is to 6 as 3 is to 18. So it should be 1 kip per foot. And then I'll come and assume my positive sign conventions. Uh, there's the positive axial force at C. There's the positive shear force at C. And then there's the positive bending moment at C. The last thing I need is to uh, get the concentrated equivalent of this distributed load to help me out. So again, it's a triangle. So the area of the triangle is one half the base times the height. So one half of six times one gives me a force of three kips. And just like we did before, the distance from the big N is one-third the distance, and that would be two feet. So I've got everything I need now to solve for these uh, internal moments. So I'll do that. Let's uh, sum moments at the cut. Make sure it's in equilibrium. Right-hand rule. So starting here at the cut... This moment is, a, with my sign convention for moments, is that a positive or negative moment? It's a positive moment. About the cut, this equivalent force of three kips creates positive or negative moment? Positive. So the force is three kips. The distance is two feet. And you get all the way out here on the end, the reaction, the nine kip force is up. And that's going to create negative bending moment. So 9 kips times 6 feet. So it looks like the moment at C is going to be positive, And it's going to be 40... What is it going to be? 8 times 6. 48? So 48 kip feet. And does it make sense that this is a positive bending moment? Again, with simple supported beam and this kind of gravity-based load, you would expect the structure to deflect down. And of course, you can kind of see that concave up or the smiley face. So again, we, we would expect positive bending moment throughout this whole structure. All right, let's get the shear. So let's sum forces in the y direction. I'll assume up is positive. So my shear is actually down. So it would be negative force. My load is down. That's a negative force. Uh, the reaction is up. That's a positive force. So it looks like the shear at C is uh, 6 kips. And last question. The DC, when it's pointing out in those positive, when you're summing, you use a negative because it's pointing down. Well, I'm summing forces here, not shear forces. Right? This is a positive shear force. But when I choose to sum forces, I can assume positive or negative any way I want. So I assumed up. Now, when I solve for it, I got a what kind of value did I get? So that means I assume the right direction. So it is a positive shear force. I assume positive shear force. I got a positive result. This, this uh, sign convention is arbitrary. You can choose any way you want, but you cannot choose this any way you want. This is positive shear force. That's it. There is no other way. 
When you get over here and you want to sum them, you can say up is positive, down is positive. It doesn't really matter. So if you sum forces in the x direction, all you have is, in our case, uh, AC. Maybe since you asked the question, I'll do this. I'll come over here and I'll sum forces again and I'll assume down is positive. I can do that, right? I can assume anything I want. So let's go over here. Uh, this is down, so that's a positive shear force. I have four positive force. Three is down, so that's positive. Nine is up, so that's negative. So solve for the shear at C, and what do you get? Six. So it doesn't matter which way you choose here. All that matters is that you assume positive. If you get positive, it's positive shear force. If you get negative, it's negative shear force. And we can do the same thing with moments. I would assume right-hand rule. That's just what I do. You could assume clockwise if you want. And all these signs would change, but this would not. This would still come out to be positive. Because this beam has positive bending moment Period. There, there is no negative bending moment in that structure. Okay. Done with that.